woman for your supreme sister or brother. Two things when we follow his leading, we won't fall victim of copying other people. And number two, we won't fall victim of unhealthy rivalry and comparison. Unhealthy rivalry and comparison. That marks and characterizes the Christian church today. People are rivals. People engage in unhealthy comparison. This person has built a house. Well, when am I going to build a house? This person has started a business. When am I starting mine? And I want to start the kind of business they started. Because in three months, they made 30 million. Hey! Have you asked the only goes before you put money? Well, your own money goes down the drain. That is God's plan for them. Is it God's plan for you? In Nigeria, is somebody doing a business in a particular location. The moment cars are stopping to patronize the person. What? Two weeks after. Six shops. The same row. Selling the same thing. So when one car stops, everybody's out. They're fighting. They're almost pulling you. Opposite on the other side of the road. Twelve shops. Same goods. Because and many, many of them are Christians. They walk by sight. By what they see. Working for other people. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Can somebody look at that quickly? 2 Corinthians 10, 12. The Bible says, we are not of them who commend themselves. Neither are we of those who compare themselves. We don't compare ourselves with other people. He said, because they comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. They are not wise. In the Yoruba Bible, only one of them. One go. In the negative, one go. In the positive, one go. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. When people don't wait on the Holy Ghost, they compare. They don't know that according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says, He has made all things beautiful in its time. There is the time for everything. Your own season is different from mine. So when you are flourishing in your season, I rejoice with you because I know my season is coming. Can I have an amen? amen. I use this very simple example. Have you seen mango crying in the season of oranges? Oranges everywhere. Once it is orange season, my brother, everywhere you go, Nasoso orange, in Nigeria, everywhere you, it's like MTN, everywhere you go, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Opposite us now, we have our satellite church. They have, a, they have an orange tree there, or maybe two. It never used to be fruitful. When our church moved in there, in fact, they told the pastors, this orange does not, this tree here is a fruitless tree. Guess what? The anointing of God in that place affected the tree there, and the tree began to produce oranges. Confirmed. Confirmed is what I'm telling you. People are eating. I'm waiting to eat of that orange. Go to Mokola Roundabout, go to UCH. All the orange trees there, they are bearing fruit because it is orange season. Mango, don't cry. Your own season is coming. Garden egg, don't kill yourself. Your own season is coming. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is a season for corn. There's another one for bone. In the season of corn, corn is everywhere. Langbejino, Abado, Bowo, Laloko, Bowo. Smells nice, smells good, tastes good. But hey, banana, don't cry because your season is coming. And when it's season for volleyball, it's everywhere. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I've never eaten bolly with a crown on before. That's a powerful combination. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. That's why Christians are not supposed to fall victim of unhealthy comparison. Everybody's carrying something. Like we heard during the blaze, the difference between us is that while you are carrying your own baby in your hand, I'm carrying mine in the womb. Give me some few more months. Hallelujah. Because my EDD is around the corner. Can I have an amen? Don't kill yourself because of what God is doing in someone else's life. People do that because they don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Oh, my mates have gained admission. They are all in UI. Oh, God. Oh, God, why me? Why? why? Have you asked the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do differently? Do you want a change of course for me? Somebody went to field jump form. Person's listening to me this morning. You want to study political science. And somebody told you put mathematics as part of your combination. Does that make sense? 
political science. What do you want to do with mathematics? And he went ahead and added math to his combination. When I asked him, I said, why did you do that? He said, ah, he's one woman. You forgot him. That as the Holy Ghost uses people, the devil also rents people. Peter told Jesus, you are not going to die. Oh. Jesus said, I will die. In three days, don't worry, I'll build this temple again. I'm going to rise again. Peter said, no, you are not. You are not. Oh God, for where? All the miracles. Peter remembered all the fishes, the bread, and everything. He said, yeah, I figure, I figure. You're not going to die. Jesus came to die. Jesus turned around and said, Peter, no, you didn't call him actually. Get me behind me, Satan. Ah, for many years, I didn't understand the scripture. Was he calling Peter Satan? No, Satan rented his mouth temporarily. Satan rents people. At the point of submitting his form online, he had planned from home his combination. But he got to the business center and the, a woman, a woman said, don't, don't laugh at the brother too much. He's in church this morning. He's my friend. Guess what? Guess what? When the results were out, he would have made it. But for that man, I felt, I felt like slapping. Ah, ah, but I love him. Out of love, I felt like slapping him. When you have listened to the Holy Ghost, it's not time to confer with flesh and blood anymore. Paul the Apostle said, I confer no longer with flesh and blood. There must be that point in your life. When God tells you to do something, if you subject it to the validation of men, you will never do it. They will give you 1,001 reasons why it can't work in Ibadan. It can't work in Nigeria. It can't work in Africa. And God said, God said, God said, who is it that speaks and it comes from us? If the Lord has spoken, we subject what God has said, what the Holy Ghost has said, to what people have to say. I'm going through a transition in my personal life and my work with God. I'm getting to that point. And I'm really talking to God every day about it. And I know the area where God is already talking to me. When we get to that point, look, no human being will be able to convince me to go back on what God has said. And when God speaks, give him some time to prove himself. That's what Gamaliel said. In Acts chapter 5, when they took Peter and the apostles and they dealt with them, and, you know, they were going to kill them, the guy said, hey, 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 put them aside. Don't let them hear our conversation. He said, if this word be from, if, it, if this word and work, counsel and work is not from God, he said it will come to naught. But if it be of God, it will stand to Please, my people, don't kill them so that you might not end up fighting against God. Whatever he said, he's the commander in chief of the armed forces of heaven. His word is final. It is the Holy Spirit who lets you understand. But everyone is carrying something and your life is not, wor is not worthless. People have told you you're worthless, you're, you don't have any value. What are you even adding to this family? Since we have given birth to you, it's been one sorrow or the other, one problem or the other. That was when my, my business crumbled. Your dad said that to you. That will crush your spirit. But I'm here to say to you as God's servant this morning, through the help of the Holy Spirit, that you don't lose your value. Can I have an amen? Your value to God. Why some already have it in their hands, others are carrying it in their womb. Can I have an amen? He's the one who helps you to rejoice while you are, you've, you've not yet seen the manifestations of what you are trusting God for. He helps you to rejoice. Why should I rejoice, pastor? I don't have that admission yet. I don't have that promotion yet. My PhD, I don't have money to start. My master's, I don't have money yet. I don't have that visa yet. I don't have that job yet. I don't have that breakthrough yet. I don't have yet, yet, yet. Don't put yet at the back because it's still going to happen. Can I have an amen? In the meantime, you need to rejoice. Many don't know how to rejoice in the body of Christ until they have a result or they have some testimony. It's very easy to know some Christians when they have money. When they get a lot, all of a sudden they realize that their God has won. What a small God they serve. 
The God of Allah is the God of no Allah. Whether credit or debit or none, there is a crop of people that always love to rejoice before God. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice again. <laughs> rejoice, he says. Always. He said rejoice. I love the King James Version. He said rejoice always. Somebody say always. All the way. Rejoice all the way into your breakthrough. Rejoice in the Lord all the way. And again I say rejoice. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord, if you don't have it, you'll be too weak. And can I tell you, every Christian, every born again Christian has joy. But not everybody gives the expression. It is death in you potentially. It's in your spirit man. But it can be there locked up. And you're there crying every day, weeping your way to bed. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh me tell you mean very anure. Shut up. Omije what? God doesn't need the Omije. Rejoice, he said. Again, rejoice in the Lord. How many times? Now it's getting low. Rejoice. How often? In the times you have money in your account? What about the time there's no money? No contract? No job? No admission? No results? Every result. How often should we rejoice? Does that include now? Let me give you 30 seconds to rejoice. And you know, some people just missed out on the opportunity to rejoice. Oh my show, they just missed out. You rejoice when you say like, eh, 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 eh. like Pastor, seriously, <laughs> I didn't eat yesterday. I don't know what I'm going to eat today. I don't have an offering. In fact, I'm waiting for you to finish service so I can collect money to go back. Rejoice! Tell you what the Holy Ghost said. I said to my wife some time ago, a few days ago actually, I said, Right now, I'll tell you why to rejoice. I'm driving a car. Now, I'm not saying this to get your sympathy. I don't, I don't need it. Those of you who know me know I hate pity part. Even when my mother died, I still came to church to preach, rejoicing. So, you know, I don't see anything for you to pity me. I drive a car now that is um, a very spiritual car. You know, in the Old Testament, they, they did a lot of offerings to God, and there was a smoke from the burnt offering that ascended to the throne of grace as a sweet smelling fire. So, when I'm driving now, my car is exhuming that smoke. I traveled some time ago, I came back, I saw somebody had broken the left mirror, driver's side mirror. <laughs> I said, oh my God, somebody's further devaluing this car. But it occurred to me that it won't last. It occurred to me that it is an opportunity for me. And this opportunity will soon pass. Because whatever you can see in the physical is subject to change. Second Corinthians 4, verses 17 and 18. Do you remember what it says? It's of our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worked for us the far more exceeding and eternal word of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Another word for temporal is subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal, and those are the promises of God. Are you with me? 
So whatever you see is subject to change. Do you believe this building is subject to change? When we were given this building about five, six years ago, it wasn't like this. We had a red rug on the altar that we inherited, ancient rug. The wall was white, that turned brown, blue, all kinds of shades. But coming in today, you say, oh wow, this is green and green, different shades, you have blue, some, another kind of blue, and do you know that when you come back here in five years, this building would have changed? Because everything you see, including you, that you see in the mirror, is subject to change. Were you like this 20 years ago? Will you be like this in 20 years' time? I know some of you are lepasious too, and you appreciate it, and you want to maintain it. Say, Pastor, I will be like this forever. Even when I get married and I have children, I will still be like this. Hey, man. When you get married, you will see. I will laugh at you. Because enjoy your lepasiousness while it lasts, baby. When I was 20, I took a picture. Oh, I was in the midst of my friends. Female friends, though. And I took a picture. Man, fine boy. You needed to see my hair, my hairline. I, I used to pop. I never used, I mean, I never used to have V-shape. I, I used to have a U-shape. Does anybody know U-shape? Very lovely. Oh, you don't understand U-shape. Very lovely. Very lovely like this. My hairline. My hairline. My hairline. You guys are laughing at me. I prophesy to the brothers. He that shall come, shall come. And shall not tarry. Even though it tarry. Wait for it. And it's a flow, yeah? Guess what? I began to look at my head in the mirror. I said, ah, ah, oh my God, what's happening here? Something has been dropping. Something, Julius Vega and RCC have started working. Because whatever you see is subject to change. How many of you believe senior pastor used to have an afro? Don't tell him. This is a secret. So what is it you are going through? You want to keep yourself. Pastor. Only one cup of garlic since yesterday. Since yesterday. Since yesterday. This should be a long time, but since yesterday. One cup of Gary. I know it is not romantic when you go through it. I've been there. But do you know why you should rejoice? You should rejoice because it's an opportunity to say. So that someday you will be on the altar sharing your testimony. You'll be a preacher and you'll be telling them, do you know there was a time, time, time? Because the time is coming, you will want to have that experience, you will not be able to have it again. Your church members will not allow you. Your business will not allow you. You will want to wear shoes that has holes. They say, oh God, wait a In fact, where will you get it from? Because if you're wearing shoes and in six months, you're giving them out. So enjoy it while it lasts. Enjoy every bit of the way. Enjoy the training. You may want to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to learn in this? You are not the author of this, but what do you want me to learn in this? you had a repeat of a particular course. You're brilliant. You're not, you're not the dullest person in your class. In fact, you're coaching other people, giving them tutorials. You're doing TDB till they break. You're, doing, you're at the head of the your, your study group, but then something happened, you failed the course. Before you rush again, can you sit down and pray in the Holy Ghost and say, Holy Spirit, is there something in this I need to know? It's only a bend, baby. It is not the end. Rejoice. The Christian should be rejoicing every day. Don't let, don't give people the opportunity to ask you what is wrong with you. Oh, sis. Oh. In fact, they've not, they've, they've not, some people, they've not, they've not asked you a question. They will just say, ah, all is well. Ah, well, uh, everybody needs. Everybody here. Everybody needs. Well, uh, it is well. They, they've not even asked you what is wrong. Don't give them the opportunity in your life again to ask you what is wrong. Can I have an Amen. We are supposed to be dispensers of joy. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, is love followed by joy. Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you don't have it, you are weak. 
Isaiah 23, it is with joy that we shall draw waters out of the wells of salvation. The Holy Ghost says to me, joy is the drawer. You know that Doro, we call it Doro in your language. If you, your water, your well is full of water, you don't have a drawer. How can you take water? You go there with your bucket, and you are standing there, and people come, they throw in the drawer, boom, they get water. One time, boom, and then you are there. Please, can I use your drawer? No, I'm sorry. You don't have a drawer. The Holy Ghost said to me also, joy is not just the drawer, it's also the strength to, to use the drawer. What is What use is the drawer when you have no strength? When you are like this, and you are by the well. Please, no money. Can you please help me fetch? And if I, how will you carry what you have fetched? Joy supplies the tonic to your spiritual muscle. Faith is that muscle. It is by faith we obtain. The Bible says, by faith we will be able to do. The elders of the faith are the faith. The faith is 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 the faith. It is the power to use to draw the water out. Joy. And it's cheap. Joy. Joy is cheap. Joy is cheap. Joy is cheap. You have it. By the Holy Spirit. It's an act of the Holy Spirit. How do I know you are full of the Holy Ghost? Every time you are rejoicing. It doesn't mean that every time you are happy. Happy is different from joy. Happiness is dependent on external circumstances. You get a new phone, you are happy. You get a new car, which will soon go old, you are happy. But as God's children, whether we get or we are joyful. I think that's what I'm saying. That's why your joy should be expressed in your praise. Praise God like people that have no place. Many are too busy. I'm the, I'm the Dean of Student Affairs University, the Premier University, University of Ibado, right? In our church, we don't shout much. Praise the Lord. We don't like to grip the Holy Spirit. Nothing they do except even the music is like, it's like dirge. You know dirge? D-I-R-G-E? Oniaro. Praise worship is like Oniaro. What? God have mercy on me. I went to one church in America. Oh my God. Oh my God. I asked my host, are you guys enjoying this church? The church is a club. They don't dance. Hallelujah. 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 They only remind me of funeral service. That's all. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You needed to see Peter and all the apostles when the Holy Ghost arrived. The Holy Ghost is the game changer. His coming was with a noise. He didn't come in quietly. He came with some noise. He came with the noisiest noise in town at that time. Let me begin to wrap up here. I've not preached half of my message, but I think I might need to just wrap up somewhere. Okay, let me introduce you. Who is the Holy Spirit? It's the third person of the government. Not in position, but for administrative purposes. It's the chief executive who carries out kingdom agenda here on earth. The Holy Ghost is the chief executive, the CEO of the Godhead. is the one carrying out the agenda of heaven on earth. Whatever the Father wants to get done, he communicates to the Son, and whatever the Son commands, the Spirit executes. It is the Holy Ghost who is actively at work on earth today. to cleanse everything with his blood so he could pave the way for the coming of the Holy Spirit. May I let you know God's kingdom is an orderly kingdom. 
John 16, verses 13 to 15. John 16, verses 13 to 15. God's kingdom is an orderly kingdom. There is order in the kingdom of God. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into some truth. Hello, church. Into what? A little more truth. So much of truth. Almost all kind of truth. What will he guide you into? So you can always ask him, Lord, what is the truth about this situation? Holy Spirit, what the, the doctors have said they, they can see cancer here, but Holy Spirit, what is the truth about this situation? And he can tell you, stop eating bread. Yeah. Yeah. A lady told me in America, she said, Pastor, you know, I've not eaten meat for two years. No, one year. She said, I've only eaten snail and fish. I said, why? She said, the Holy Ghost said that to me. I said, if it was the Holy Ghost, then take it to that instruction and don't let go of it. He knows why. Do you, hello, 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 everybody. Do you think the Holy Ghost knows your DNA? He knows all the chromosomes in your body? Your genotype? Are you sure he knows your genetic makeup? Is he aware that if you eat certain things, they can harm you, even though they are not harming other members of your family, but they can harm you particularly? Doctor, does that happen? I wouldn't tell you that I heard the voice of the Spirit to stop eating bread, but I had an inward witness in me to cut down on my intake of bread. Now this is me. Don't go and quote me anywhere. Don't go and preach this and say, hey, everybody stop eating bread. It's not good. No, no, no. And the Lord has not instructed me to teach people to do that. But it's personal. And you know man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, the anointed word of God. That's to me. That's my rhema. If you knew me before. You will never be. In fact, one of my friends used to call me bread. If he says Fred, and I didn't hear, he would say bread, I would hear. He would say, when I say Fred, you didn't hear. But I say bread, now you heard it. Because Fred and bread, they have this combination, this synchronization. All kinds of bread. I traveled to America one time. The lady, we went to the, to the mall and went to buy stuff. They didn't buy bread. I said, what's the name of this? My groceries? You didn't buy bread? The lady said, Pastor, this is, it's poison. I said, what's poison? I don't know, I don't know. Poison cake. What's poison? Bread. Ah! My Miss Nigel. Yeah. I get Sebilo. Does everyone know? Do you know Sabino bread? Olu Alobo bread? Or your bread? The one that has that has punch at the back. Oh man, Shuke. You guys think you have bread in the southwest? Go to the eastern part of Nigeria. From Anambra, that Onicha bridge. Hey! Tineke. You go, you go see bread, you go fear. Go to Potakot. You see bread like this. Bread from the floor. Here. You go reach here. You carry. You don't, you don't buy. You carry. And when you bite into it, you bite into all kinds of all kinds of sweet things. Oh, without soup, without sauce, without butter, without just eat the bread and drink butter, you're fine. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I pick different kinds of bread. They were looking at me. They said, Pastor, no, this is for sausage. I said, what sausage? No, 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 bread is bread. Give me sausage bread. Give me, give me the long one. Give me slice. Give me the round one. Give me the small, small one. I was eating every day. I didn't force it. I didn't even think about it. It was in my time of private devotion. One day I was feasting on Samano 3. And verse 5 says, it satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. And the Holy Spirit intercepted me and said, have you asked me for the good things for your own mouth? The good thing. It satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. For my youth is renewed like the eagles. What are those good things that should be eating? Some people need to cut down on red meat. The problem they are having in their health was caused by red meat, but the thing is one witch in their family. Some women use oil to fry, to save it. You use it again to fry a second time. You use it again to fry. Fry a kara. After that, it will cool down for two days. You use it again to fry chicken. You cool down. You use it again to fry fish. 
something is happening to that oil. One of my mentors said he was suffering from acute pain in his elbow. So three days, he set up at that time. I do that, and I'm doing it often now. That's why you guys haven't seen me around. Just spend time with the Lord. It is good. You will enjoy it. I came back yesterday. My wife said, ah. My son said, Daddy, your cheeks have, have grown a bit. You, like, you're now chubby. I said, what? I've been fasting, man. I didn't believe him. Until my wife saw me and said, ah, hey, you're in a care. I said, ah, I went fasting. My mentor said, for three days, he was saying, Lord, what is this? I need your wisdom here. And he was praying the Holy Ghost. Remember, on the third day, the Lord spoke. Oh, I said, ah, you're in a care. He said that was tough. He didn't want to hear that because he was a coffee addict. He was so addicted to coffee, it had accumulated in his system. He didn't need drugs to relieve that pain. He needed to stop the intake, the further intake of coffee. The Lord told him what to do. Get a cup of coffee before you get communion. Say to that coffee, In the name of Jesus, I have no need of you again in my life. And push it and take the communion. He said, from that day, he has lost taste for coffee. I suggest to you, who are, those of you that are struggling with some kind of addiction, pornography, drugs. There was a guy who used to come to this church with drugs in his pocket. When I say drugs, I mean tramadol. Somebody exposed them to me. I tried to help him, he ran away. So you can be free. There's no addiction you can be free from. You tell that thing. Now, don't go to porn and say, I have no need of you again. Don't turn on that porn site and be looking at it and say, I have. You won't know when you say, I have need of you. Back in the day when we used to go for all night browsing, the devil really punished us. We will go for all night browsing to search for universities abroad, scholarships and all that. And we'll do two hours of searching, the remaining hours for porn. Somebody will start it. Then the other person will say, no, 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 no. We are born again. No, we are Christians. Ah, 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 bro, can you be looking at something like this? Ah, ah. Then you leave your system. Ah, ah, ah. Why? It's not good, though, my brother. Look, look, my brother, let's talk, let's talk. Eh? Scroll up a little bit. Ah, mama, papa, who are you? What about? And you sit down there. Have you forgotten? Blessed is the man, Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scoffer. If you stand in the way of the ungodly, very soon you'll be wanting to sit in the seat of the scoffer. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. No standeth in the way of sinners, no seated in the seat of his comfort. Somebody is having eye problems here. And your eye problems is because of the too many hours you spend in front of your computer in the form of your smartphone. And it's beginning to affect your eyes now. And you're thinking, it's the devil that is attacking me and afflicting me. Yes, but because you opened the door. Now you need to cut down on that. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I've just spoken to somebody. We need to seek the wisdom of God. One of the acts of the Holy Spirit is that it gives us the wisdom of God for every situation. Somebody's having migraine, and you're having migraine not because it is genetic, not because you inherited it from your parents, not because some witch, you are a child of the Most High God. You're having migraine because you're not getting enough sleep. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. Am I talking to somebody today? So as we take the communion, you're going to tell the Lord. Some of, we need to make lifestyle adjustments. The next phase of this preaching is a lot of teaching, which if I start today, I'll be under pressure to finish. So I'm, I'm, are we coming next Sunday? 
Let me stop right there. Has somebody been blessed today? Let me close by telling you what happened on the day of Pentecost. It wasn't just the Holy Ghost that came on the day of Pentecost. The holy angels of God came with him. Those angels couldn't stay here permanently. Sins hid them fair and contaminated everything with sin. That's why you remember in Genesis 28 and verse 16, when Jacob had a dream, he saw angels ascending and descending from heaven on a spiritual ladder. You remember? That's what they've been doing. They had been doing in the Old Testament. You remember in Daniel chapter 10, God sent an angel to go and give interpretation of the dream to Daniel. God was always sending them. When Jesus was going to be born, God sent Gabriel, Luke chapter 1. When John was going to be born, same Luke chapter 1, God sent Gabriel to Elizabeth. First to Elizabeth and then, uh, no, to um, Zechariah while he was ministering to the Lord. And then to uh, Mary and Elizabeth. Now, from time to time, angels would come from heaven and bring a message. They couldn't stay here permanently until the blood of Jesus was shed. It was that blood that paved the way for the Holy Ghost to come and for the holy angels who have been waiting for about 4,000 years to come. Men, those angels are mighty. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them came in the company of the Holy Ghost. That was why that sound was so noisy. God was coming to the earth. It didn't matter where you were on the face of the earth on that day. If you were in Nigeria, you heard that sound. Because the Bible says in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 that all the men in Jerusalem heard. People heard. They ran. What's happening? Thousands of men on the street. Hey, what's going on here? The next thing they knew, they heard people speaking in tongues. People came. Tourists came from, the Bible says, all nations of the earth to Jerusalem for the feast of Pentecost. Visitors from every nation. And they heard these men, these 120 men and women, speaking in tongues, speaking in their own dialects. How would you feel if you had the chance of going to Canada and in a church service, a white man, a white man stands up who has never been to Africa and is praying and is saying, Abbasiorium Fee, Abbasiorium Fee, Abbasiorium Fee. AMM King Jesus, AMM King Jesus, oh Jesus, AMM King Jesus, Abbasiorium Fee. Speaking Aqua Ibom language. After the service, you walk up to him, sir. Ah, thank you, sir, for speaking my language. Oh, I feel so much at home here. This is my first time in Ontario, Canada. And he says, hello, what, what are you talking about? Oh, when you were praying the other time, you were speaking my language, you were praising God in my language. Your language? Where are you from? I'm from Africa, Nigeria, precisely acquired. I've never been to Africa all my life. I, I don't know. In fact, I don't know anybody from Africa that's a personal friend. I'm afraid that I, I don't speak your language. No, you spoke my language when I came in. That was what happened. Till today it is happening. When the Azusa Street revival happened, one of the offshoots of that revival, we get back to the Pentecostal movement was that a lady, a particular woman, was going to go to China. She had never learned Chinese. She spoke in tongues in Chinese language. She spoke so well, she couldn't stop, she couldn't speak English for days. She couldn't even write English. Don't mess with the Holy Spirit. I want to beg you, young people today, as we close this service, let the Holy Ghost be comfortable in your body. Please. Make him comfortable in your life. I know we have challenges. We have issues. Our libido is high. We want to have sex. That's our number one problem. Everybody want to have sex. Everybody say, Jesus, come to There is an experience that is sweeter than sex. 
There's an experience that is indescribable. It is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Ah, what a needless thing we do. All because we don't fellowship with Him. Do you know the Holy Ghost can teach you your course? The most difficult course that is giving you problem in school. That even your lecturer is only reading from the book to teach. Do you know there are lecturers like that? They are literally just reading. Sometimes I, I shake my head. Lecturer, they believe that. I hear some lecturers speaking English and I'm, ah, you are. Ah! Ask myself something, Fred, what have you done with your life? Should I be a lecturer? Because I will just be toasting one of my students that I trained years ago. He's, he's doing his PhD now in UI. He's a lecturer now. When he saw me, because I'm running the program, he ran to me and said, Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I said, oh, Kenny, how are you? The guys around me were like, Because I, I wore jeans and t shirt. He was my student years ago. I taught him English. He's doing his PhD in literature, literature and English. Said I'm rounding off, so I'm doing some teaching and some lecturing. Said I came to supervise my students. Said wow. Ha, 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 ha. Said okay. You can call me. You just, you just dust. You just dust everybody. You just dust. I said well, glory be to God. I thank God for where I am. I'm not in competition. I said that to say, the Holy Ghost can teach you. When I started teaching them English years ago, you know, they used to think I had a PhD in English. The Holy Ghost has always been my teacher. I would take the books, read the books, pray in the Holy Ghost, wait on him for interpretation. By the time I came to class, I gave them real life examples that they could relate to. Many of my students are still referring to the examples I used to give them that made the course come alive. You can teach a course and the course will be as dead as the lecturer. And the students will be sleeping. Another lecturer will take the same course and you'll be on the edge of your seat from the beginning of the class to the do you know what I'm talking about? English can be very boring but English can be very sweet mathematics can be the most boring subject mathematics can be the sweetest does anybody know what I'm talking about? depends on whose hands you see the Holy Ghost I've, I've never known a better teacher than the Holy Ghost please I submit to you today make him comfortable Make him comfortable. He's not comfortable in sin. I know about righteousness. I know about righteousness, consciousness. I know that nothing I do changes my righteousness. I know it's my status in Christ. But I also know that there are things I do that don't make the Holy Ghost comfortable in my life. If I come to your house as a visitor, there are things you do I will never come again. Ah, Pastor, welcome to my pastor. Egeleza, Egeleza, Egeleza. You turn on TV. I'm here to see you. Then you are watching TV. And I'm watching. No water, no drink, no food. Even if I'm not going to eat, at least you offer me. You ignore me. You go to your friends. You go to your younger ones. And you're playing in another room. Ah! And I can hear your, your laughter. Your giggles. <laughs> and your pastor is there. 30 minutes, no attention. I will call you. God bless you. I just said I should say hello to you. Have a nice day. But you know I'm never coming back. I'm in your house on the contrary. Spend time with me. Like Mary. Oh, Pastor, so good to have you around. It's like, Jesus is in my house. Ah, Pastor, thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, Pastor, then we get to talking personally. Pastor, please, can I get you something to drink? Something to No, 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 no. I came to see you. You give me quality attention. When I'm passing by tomorrow, I will drop. I'll drop by. What movies are you watching? Do you remember your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Do you remember it's in you? What are you making him watch with you? When nobody is watching. In the dead of the night. music are you listening to? Have you asked him for his own favorite songs? I'm not saying don't have a life. But be conscious of him on the inside. 
when you dance to songs that celebrate masturbation? Is it comfortable? Can you preach in that atmosphere? Can you watch certain movies and see the glory of God? As you are watching the movie, you are seeing God's glory. Can you engage in some backbiting and side talks and hear the voice of the Spirit? Let's check our lives. Of the Holy Spirit. He's our friend, our companion, our helper, our standby. He wants to help you in the most difficult situation of your life. Stand on your feet, everybody. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Listen, church, as we close, we're going to take the communion now. The Holy Spirit has a role to play in your health. Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in your body, he that raised up Christ, the anointed one and his anointing from the dead will quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. The Holy Ghost can do what no medicine can do. He can get to your genes. He can change damaged, diseased genes and replace them with healthy ones. Can I have an amen? Please, church, are we together? Can I have an amen? The Holy Ghost is a healer. It's not just a dog, it's not just a bird, it's a healer. Romans 8:11 says, it won't just have impact on your spirit, 
The Holy Ghost, if you allow him, will have impact on your body. He that raised up the anointed one from the dead will revitalize, will quicken, strengthen, make new your body. Your body, not your spirit, your body. By his spirit that dwells in you. Holy Spirit, as we approach the table of the Lord today, and as we partake of this communion element, revitalize our mortal bodies. Let every organ that is dead, that needs to be alive, whether it's an eye, or it's a nerve in the brain, or it's a cell in any part of the body. As we take this communion material, let us Dematerialize, dissipate, disappear. Whatever pain in the body, get out of that body in the name of Jesus. Grow, die from the root in the name of Jesus. We receive wholeness, we receive wellness. We receive restoration. As somebody who is a student, you are always forgetting things and it's difficult for you to learn. The Spirit of God is healing your mind completely, restoring you to the original mind of Christ that you have. Now, now, receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, as we take this, we remember what you have done. We remember your death crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. I will decree and declare nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in our lives. Our finances receive divine help from heaven in the name of Jesus. Anyone at the edge of shame because of finances, anyone today that came to church Say, Lord, please, if you don't do this, I'll be put to shame. And if you don't do it today, Lord, please. I join my faith with you, that brother. I join my faith with you, that sister. And I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see a miracle. God will move on your behalf. Yeah. How he's going to do it, don't worry, but he's going to do it. Give him thanks this morning. So, Lord, I lay my hands on these elements and will receive them with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We receive it with thanksgiving. God bless you. If you are not born again yet, please don't take it. When they get to you, tell them to pass you by. And I want everybody to take it, so please come. If you are not going to take it for any reason, please come. Let us pray together. Because I want everybody to partake of this. We prayed Psalm 91 earlier of our families. Please come. If for any reason you are not born again yet, or you are not full of the Holy Ghost, and you don't want to take the communion, please can you come, let's pray together as we close the service. Quick, quick, quick. Our time is fast spent. I'm on extra five minutes now. Anyone this morning? Is everybody born again in church today? Even if you are born again, but there's a reason you're not taking the communion. Please come. I want to pray with you. Let's break that reason together. Let's break it. God bless you. God bless you. Come, 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 come. God bless you, my brother. I like you, bro. Go bounce forward. You like me too? Give you a hug, bro. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Anyone who wants to come, let us pray together. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Come, come, come from everywhere. Please, quickly. Want to close the service? Come, 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 come. God bless you, sister. God bless you. 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 I love you. God bless you. Any more? Any more that would like to come? Because I want everybody to take the communion. Any more? Any more? Any more that would like to come? Maybe you've given your life to Christ before, but you took it back. And today you want to read at the gate. It's a good day. The first Sunday in November. Acts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Conversion is an act of the Holy Spirit. It's not the eloquence of the preacher. It's the Holy Ghost that seeds some people and plants the seed of the word in them. And that word begins to grow and they begin to look like Jesus. That's what has happened to us. Looking more and more like Jesus. Any other person that would like to come? Please come, quick. Come, 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 come. Let's deal with that devil quickly and take the communion and feast with Jesus. King Jesus is calling us to a feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to wait anymore. Let's pray. My brother and my sisters, with your eyes closed, I'd like you to say these words out loud. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Christ died for my sins, and I believe. The Bible also says, He rose again for my justification, and I also believe it. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Right now, be my Lord and my personal savior and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Listen church, there is the book of life. There is the Lamb's book of life where those who are born again have their names written. Is your name in that book? It may be in the book of life, but is it in the Lamb's book of life? Precious Father, I pray for these ones who have responded to the call today. Holy Spirit, you've started your work already. Move into their hearts. Take up residence. Take up residence, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Recote se capa. Take out. Me la voz. Ebra haremos sus caravanas. Holy Spirit. Move in here. Destroy the yoke by the reason of the anointing. In the name. Jesus! Shamba hala basata. Get a boss. The protos kedes kadabaha. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let the river begin to flow now. As you speak in tongues. Get a boss. Help him. Help him. Take him to the room. Help him. Pray in tongues as you go. Not over you. Not over you. Holy Spirit of the living God, take up residence in this life. Use this lady for your glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, Spirit, blaze in the name of Jesus.
Begin to speak in tongues. Begin to speak in tongues. Receive the Holy Ghost now. Begin to speak in tongues. He's in you and he's on you. He's in you and he's on you. Manamola sokapa. Lekete kerabahali. Malaba shafaya. Malemu shidaba. Church stand, let's close the service. Hallelujah. Don't forget to make him comfortable in your life this week. Everywhere you go, ask him questions before you go. Ask him. He can save your life, save you from danger, can bring huge blessings to your life. And God wants to do that. I said God wants to do that. Enough is enough with hustling in your business. Those of you that are business people, enough is enough with your hustling, your lakaka. It's not by lakaka. Don't be by hustling, by the spirit. Zechariah 4 says, it's not by man, not by power, but by my spirit, share the Lord. Whatever God is going to do, that's the modus of branding. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Let's quickly give the Lord, worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Quick, media, please, can you project our bank details? And we go. Quickly, I also want to remind those of you who made pledges for a place, please redeem your pledge. If you haven't done so, it is important you do so. It's a seed. Then sown into God's word, and you can expect a harvest. Amen. Lord, we cast our tithes and offerings this morning into your word. I'm asking that you bless everyone today. Asking that you meet every need and you supply according to your riches and glory by the anointed Jesus. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Ushers, please go ahead. Feel free to receive it. Bible study continues this Thursday. Were you blessed last Thursday? Be blessed again this Thursday. I'm not saying I'm going to teach, but I'm saying I'm going to be blessed. Whether I'm here or not, I want to go to the campuses now. So you guys take care of yourselves. No, don't worry, I'm around. Where is God? Holy Ghost is here. Amen. I celebrate you, sir. Thank you for coming. I see you, sir. So D A. Share the grace of fellowship. Are we ready, church? Hey, church, are you ready? Hey, Holy Ghost anointed people, are you ready? Have you been blessed today? Are you full of the Holy Ghost? Are you full of the joy of the Lord? Are you going to make the Holy Ghost comfortable in your life this week? Is it going to be comfortable in your life this week? One, two, let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Lift your hand for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Grant you peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in your life now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Turn to your neighbors and neighbor. I love you. The Lord God of your fathers, make you a thousand times, so many more, as you are, and bless you, as he has promised you. In Jesus' name, I release you this week, and I remind you this week, to allow the Holy Ghost carry out his acts through you. Amen. amen. In Jesus name somebody shout amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week.